to Sociable Art. This is Arianne and today we're going to paint a winter barn scene and I'm showing you here the 16 by 20 that I painted as the original for this work of art and then you can purchase a printed canvas sheet with paints, an entire kit from sociableart.com S-O-C-I-A-B-L-E A-R-T.com and um, right now I'm showing you the paints that are included in the kit. This is a pretty simple palette. And if you're painting it along at home, you can just sketch the barn on a canvas. And then you're gonna use um, ultramarine blue, a yellow oxide, a black, and a white paint. Um, another shade of yellow would work as well, but I'm using the yellow oxide uh, to get the colors that you see in the finished product here. Um, so I am taking the yellow oxide first and I'm going to mix just a little bit of that with the white. A little bit goes a, a long way and I'm using my medium brush to do that mixing in my uh, palette. You might want to use a flat surface to mix your paints. I like to do that like a flat palette or a, even a, like a styrofoam plate because then you have more room to mix colors. Um, but here I'm just using the regular size palette and uh, added a little bit of yellow into the white paint. You might not see it too well here on the canvas, um, but there is a yellow tinge to this. It's supposed to look like the sun is just rising over the mountains. Um, it's a very subtle yellow, but probably a little bit deeper than what you might be able to see here on the video. Um, you want to use uh, less white than you might, I mean less yellow than you might think because all the colors that you apply to the canvas will dry darker than they appear in your palette. They will also go onto your canvas darker than what they seem to be in the palette. So if you look at my palette, that yellow and white um, is pretty pale, but when I put it on and it dries, you can see it quite well in the sky. So I started in this one area over the mountains and I'm just brushing that in. And if it seems to be a bit too deep and dark in some areas, then I'll add white into it right there on the canvas um, to make it a little more subtle. And as I move up the canvas, I'm gonna start to add even more white into my original shade so that it gets lighter towards the top of the sky. Um, if you want to, in the original, I kind of deepened um, some of the corners and edges of the canvas, and you can do that just by adding more color into the, um, the areas on the side and in the corners. Um, when I come to the area where there are birds printed in the sky, there are little, you know, little shapes of, indistinct shapes of birds, I just paint right over that, and I'm doing that, as you can see right here. And sometimes a little bit of the ink um, from that print might you know, smear just a little teeny bit. And if you just continue to paint over it with several brush strokes, it'll just uh, blend right in and you won't notice that at all. So the kind of brush strokes I'm doing here in the sky, um, sometimes I'll do some lo longer sweeping strokes, but I like to do a lot of like a back and forth, kind of like a little X's that I'm making my with my brush. And that makes sure to kind of blend any uneven tones in the sky. So I'm kind of going back and forth and doing these little uh, brush strokes back and forth so that I have an even coverage. And it's kind of hard to see, but you want to make sure that you cover every little bit of that white canvas. We don't want white canvas showing through. And if you end up being one of my um, painters that some people are very spare with their paint, and they tend to have a lot of little bits of white canvas showing through. If that's happening to you, number one, try to use a little more paint. Um, but if it's just, you know, you just find that you keep doing this using very little and having the canvas show through, then maybe you should just add a teeny bit of water to your paint that will make your paint thinner and will uh, get it to kind of fill in the grooves in the canvas and seep into that canvas a little bit better so that you get a little more coverage and you won't see that canvas showing through. Um, and then on the other hand, we have people that use a lot of paint and maybe a bit too much. I mean, there's such a style as like a painterly style of um, painting like Van Gogh where you used a lot of paint. You could see the brush strokes and everything and that's, that's fine. If that's your style, go for it. Um, but sometimes if you use a, little, a bit too much, 
um, they can kind of take over your canvas and make it a little hard to blend colors and things like that. So, um, and one thing I forgot to say at the beginning, and this is true with all of my paintings, I'm going to show you how to paint it so it can look as similar as my original as possible. But I want you to know that you can um, definitely do it your own way. And if you want the sky to be blue, please make it blue or a dark gray. That's fine as well. It is your painting and you should do it the way that you feel comfortable. And I love it when you have originality and want to do it your own way. Okay, here I'm taking a little of the ultramarine blue, just a little bit, adding some white into that uh, circle in the palette. So I get a pale, it's kind of like what it looks like to me. It's kind of a purplish blue. I like the color a lot. So I'm creating that color, and that's going to be for um, the mountains in the background. Now the one that's way in the background, I think there would be some of that pale yellow glow on that mountain. So um, I'm also going to add some of the yellow, a little bit of the yellow oxide into this blue shade that I created. And you'll see I keep adding white into that color because, as I said, it will dry darker on the canvas. And um, so you want to work more subtly with something that's not too different from your sky. So in the palette, you can see it's very pale and it will appear darker when I put it on top of that print. So just be aware of that. And if you start putting your paint on and it looks too dark to you, just stop, remix your color and paint over it. You do not have to commit to it just because you already mixed it. So, um, and if you mixed it too dark, Rather than keep adding white to it and run out of white paint, you might want to just start over again and try to mix it lighter rather than creating a ton of the wrong color. So here I am, I'm filling in the mountain. And one thing I want to say about brush strokes is sometimes you've got to, on a print like this, you want, you're going to have to fill it in however you can with your brush strokes. But what's important is that when you're done filling in the area, that you go back and kind of, I would say, correct your brush strokes, like make them go in the direction that makes sense for a mountain. You know, you don't want them going every which way. So I would smooth out the brush strokes after I finish filling in if I kind of had to do brush strokes in every different direction to fill it in. And so I used this one shade and I filled in the entire shape of that mountain with this one shade. But then I'm going to go in, I'm creating a slightly darker shade here, more um, ultramarine, more yellow oxide. And so it's a darker shade of my original color. And I'm gonna add that here along um, the horizon line, like along this line here next to the barn at the lower part of the mountain. And since the paint is still wet on the upper part, I should be able to easily blend between those two wet paint colors, the lighter shade and the darker shade. And that's what I'm doing right here. And I'm also going to add some of this darker shade on the right side of the barn along that line. And then uh, once I do that, um, I do want to make sure that I don't have just a solid shape for the mountain. So I'll go in and I'll add um, some little uh, different variations of shade in that mountain, like add some white paint directly into it or some darker areas so that it's not just one solid shape because most likely there would be ridges on there and all sorts of things. But here I am uh, filling in with the darker shade at the base of the second mountain. And I'm, I'll blend that in later. Right now there's no paint on that mountain but I will blend it in when I fill in that mountain. So here I am just adding a lighter shade right next to that darker shade because I'm telling you it's much easier to mix two wet paints than to let that dark area dry and then try to mix it in with the next shade. So remember that rule, it's much easier to, to mix those paints when they're wet. And if that means re-wetting a color, then that's what you do. And here I'm adding um, a straight white without cleaning my brush, so I'll let another color get into it maybe, but a straight white on the top of the mountain because I figured there would be a little snowfall on that mountain and it also helps it to stand out against the mountain that's behind it. So we start out with the straight white and as I move down, I, I'm going to end up picking up some of the other color, this darker shade, and that's good because then they'll just blend taking a little more of this white now and adding it into that first mountain 
as I was saying, so that it'll look like it's three-dimensional and not one just solid shape. So here's maybe some snowy ridges on that mountain. And then a little yellow added to the white and blue and adding some of that just to give it some variation. And especially I'm doing that right along the line where the mountain touches the sky because I didn't want it to look like there was this, you know, really intense line because that's just not the way it appears. When you look off into the distance and see mountains, the edges are kind of blurred by distance. So that's why I added the whitish shade right on that line where the mountain touches the sky so that it will make, make it a little more subtle. Okay, so I'm getting the excess. Sometimes you have so little paint in your brush, you can just use your paper towel to get the excess out, and that's what I've just done there, not having to put it into the water and get a lot of water into my brush. I just kind of got, you know, got it out onto the um, paper towel. And also having that excess in my brush, I'm just putting a little white shade here along this area where the sun's going to be shining. That's where there's going to be some nice white snow. But really I'm going to work on that area later. Um, I just had some paint in my brush I needed to get rid of. So now I'm creating a shade a, of the ultramarine mixed with the yellow oxide again. And see that color? It's kind of a deeper shade. Adding a little more ultramarine to it. And it creates some, um, it's kind of a difficult uh, shade, shade to describe, but it's got a brownish tint to it. And, um, but mostly you know, I see the blue showing more than, you know, more than the yellow and I just wanted to create this dark shade to fill in this pine tree and I'm showing you up close so that you can see that I like to use my medium brush if your medium brush has a nice edge to it it holds more paint and that's why I like it better than using like one of the small skinny round brushes because those are kind of difficult to use unless you have some practice with them and the more that you press down on one of those small brushes the more the bristles spread out and then you end up with thick lines. So I like using a light touch with the very edge of, or corner even, of this medium brush. And the more you use this brush, the more you'll get used to how to use it to create detail. Um, but you'll see me using this throughout most of the painting. In fact, I'm not sure I ever use, I think I use the, the skinny round brush or the liner brush to um, sign my name and that's about it. So filled in the whole shape, not worrying about the snow on it yet. And then um, adding some of the um, greenery in the background on this side, which in this case, there's a little um, kind of a shape of a tree with no leaves. It's very vague. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just some lines and branches, again, using my medium brush with a very light touch. And I want to show you something about trees, um, just a real quick little lesson here. Because I see people do this a lot with trees. And I, I'm doing this on my, um, on my plastic table covering. But I'm showing you that, first of all, lines of a tree should be um, not straight lines. Very few trees have straight lines or branches coming straight out. So I'm doing kind of a crooked curving line, randomly curving. And then when I do the next branch, did you see how I start on the main branch or on the trunk? See, start on the trunk and have that branch grow out of the trunk. See that? It comes right out of the original trunk. And every time I add a branch, I want to start on a main branch or on the trunk and then have that branch come out of there. It's like it's growing out of the trunk. And trust me, this makes the tree look a lot more natural. I'm going to show you the other way that I see beginners do it, which doesn't look as natural. But as you can see, I'm growing from the main branch every time. Now here's how I see beginners do it. Start with the trunk. Okay, and they do that right with the, you know, the wavery line. But then when they go to the add branches, they start outside and try to add them in. And I don't know if you can see, it's, it's, the effect is just, it's not as natural looking as when, especially because you're going to have more paint when you start on the outside. And also, it just looks like they're so separate from the tree. So you want to start on the tree and then have them grow out of the tree rather than add them in this way. Okay, one that's just a little lesson. 
you don't have to worry about so much on this because your your tree will be printed on there and so you don't have to really create it from scratch but still the same guidelines um, I would use those and start on the trunk for every branch so I'm adding this little tree in here and then there are some also some grasses along there that I want to add in on both sides and with that same shade that I created I'm just adding some little branches on there and the great thing is if, if you um, create your tree and you really don't like it or it gets too thick or something like that you don't have to despair because with painting you always have a second chance you have a whole lot more paint in your palette and if you would just um, let that area dry or else if it's still real wet you can take a little corner of your paper towel and actually wipe it off almost like an eraser like if you didn't like the tree wipe off the wet paint you'll still seem to see some of that it on there but then you can just cover right over it with the same color that you use to create your mountain just cover over it and you get a second chance third chance fourth chance however many you need you can keep repainting this canvas as much as you want it could have seven layers of paint on it or you could do it one way like you're, you're doing it with me right now and then tomorrow you could decide you want a beautiful sunset in the background and redo your sky um, you can change all the colors you can make it a red barn so just know that you can paint over this again and again um, for practice so here I am on this side just creating another um, pine tree this one I'm doing in a lighter shade I think that this one in my opinion should be kind of further off in the distance so the shade I'm using is more just the ultramarine uh, not even you know maybe just a teeny bit of the yellow mostly this is just the ultramarine with white added because I want it to fade off into the mountain and then I'm doing a couple other vague shapes in that same color back here just to give some interest to this horizon line so just kind of dabbing on there maybe doing some ideas of some branches I know you can't probably see it that well in this um, image but there are some back there and then also the top of a pine tree is peeking over the top of this roof right here so I'm adding that in with that same uh, lighter ultramarine with white okay and then I had some extra in my paintbrush so I'm just um, kind of adding that to the top of this snowy area here but I don't want to fill in this entire snowy area yet because um, there's a rule when you're painting you want to do the things that are behind first so this snow is actually on top of the front of the the barn right so we want to do that after we paint the barn so that just keep that in mind you always want to do the things that are in the background first and move towards the foreground uh, right now I am creating some of these um, this is supposed to be kind of like a drive up to the barn so there would be kind of a muddy tracks where a tractor or a car went so this is the blue with the yellow oxide and maybe if you want to be just a little darker even just a teensy bit of the black in there if you want if you if you don't think that's too dramatic a contrast and one thing I don't want you to do when you create these these uh, tire tracks is it should not be like straight lines there should be nothing like straight or solid about this because think of it this way um, these are some old tire tracks but it has snowed so there would be some clumps of snow covering some of them some of them would be deeper and more shadowed and then some you wouldn't see hardly at all so it's kind of a broken line is what I'm doing I don't know if you can see because it's not close up but it's kind of like a broken line with, with some areas where there would be snow then while I've got that shade I just added um, just a little bit of maybe some uh, weeds sticking up there on the side you're just darkening and filling in making that last part of the tire track a little wider and I'm basically using the corner of my medium brush to do these little dabs okay I got that paint out of my brush so I don't I, um, got some of the the darkest shade out of my brush 
And now I just added a little bit of yellow, a little bit more blue. So I've got, again, and then I'm adding a little black to it. So I've got a darker shade. And put some white in it. What I'm trying to do here is creating shades for my barn, for the planks on the barn. And, you know, it's not going to be one color. So in this one area of my palette, I've created a darker shade and a lighter shade, maybe even three shades, so that I can kind of move from from shade to shade as I fill in. Now, eventually this barn is going to have some vertical planks, as you can see in the print. But when you're filling in, it's very hard to be doing those vertical planks as you're filling in. It, it would be hard to fill in the whole canvas and not have lines showing of blank canvas. So what I do first is I fill in the barn, and here I am filling in parts of the roof because it's basically the same color. But I'm going to fill in the barn with sometimes horizontal strokes, whatever strokes I need to use to fill in that barn. And you can even add just a little bit of water into your paint so that the paint's a little bit thinner um, and it makes it easier to cover the area. So I'm filling the roof here, so let me just pause for a second as I fill in that roof. But then, um, going back to my barn shade, well actually, sorry, I um, since I filled in part of the roof, if I were to just let that completely dry like that, it would be hard for it to blend in very well and it might look odd, it might look like an odd shape on my roof. So what I did is I just grabbed some white paint and I'm just kind of subtly blending the edges of that shape on the roof. And the shape on the roof is really just the roof showing through the snow. But I'm using a little white. I just don't want the edges to be really defined so that when I put the snow on, it'll look more natural. Now, going back to my barn, I have one basic color. And on the left side here, it's a little shadowed, so it might be a little darker on that side. But I'm going to just fill it in however you can, which is a small area. So I'm going to use a horizontal stroke along with a few vertical strokes. And then later, I'll go back and I will fill in um, more of the defined planks. But in the beginning, if you have to use some horizontal strokes to fill in that area, as I said earlier, use whatever brush strokes that you need to use to fill in the area, because I know it's a small area and it can be hard to get in there. But then go back afterwards and, and define your planks and correct your brush strokes. So right now, just using that same color, maybe adding um, a little white. I'm adjusting as I go because this side of the barn should be a little bit lighter. So I'm doing some white in there too because the sun might be shining on parts of this. Though I think most of, actually, most of the side of the barn is in, in shadow too. So it's not going to be really light. Um, there's going to be um, a shadow cast on this too. So here I am filling in and then occasionally doing some vertical strokes to correct or add the look of planks. But you can see in some areas I just can't do it. I can't fill it in vertically so I'm just filling it in how I can then going back and adding vertical strokes. And also I definitely don't want it to be just one solid color so I'll add some different variations of shades. And here I'm using an even darker shade to get this roof line in using the edge of my brush. And if it doesn't go as smoothly as it did for me and it's crooked, you can always correct by wiping it off and trying again. And I'm doing a slightly darker line along the top of that door. And then I'm just continuing to fill in the planks. adding some strokes of white into it as I go just for having the look of weathered planks they will be different shades if you see that I just used my finger I do that a lot by the time I'm finished I end up with paint all over my hands because it's just quite handy to have your finger right there as an eraser from time to time Oh, and one thing I, I like to mention is 
I don't, you don't see me doing it too much with this because I'm painting flat on the um, table. But it's really good to every once in a while get a step back from your painting and look at it from a slight distance to see how it's coming together because it's very hard to see it with the perspective of being right on top of it. So if you can pause every now and then, um, prop up your canvas. Um, I've got mine attached to a wood panel uh, with tape, but just prop it up somewhere, take a look at it, and you might see, uh oh, I gotta correct that, that's slightly crooked, or that shade is too contrasted, and you really get a different perspective. So I really recommend doing that. You don't wanna wait to the end to do it, because um, you know, then it's all finished, and you, I mean, you can always go back and correct it, but it's better to catch it you know, part way along the way and correct it as you go. Okay. So I've added some of the planks, added some lighter lines, some darker lines, making sure that the left side is a little darker because it's uh, more shadowed over there. And here you'll see I'm just adding some more lighter lines for some more light planks. It might be a little hard to see in this video, but just adding those nice light planks in the front where it's a little lighter. And also, um, there's a little bit of um, outlining around this door with a lighter shade, like a trim around the door. And there's also a trim around the window. And on that, while I'm using my medium brush, you might find it easier to use your small brush, the one that comes with the kit, to get that little line around um, the door and I don't sit there and outline directly around the whole window or door that would look really artificial I just get parts I think would be highlighted by Sun and there I am adding that dark line along the roof and the barn has uh, an irregular roof shape on the front like it's not just a V an upside down V it's got also this side on the left that's a little bit uh, at a different angle and so I added that darker shade for the roof line all the way along and now I'm filling in the inside, the interior of the barn. The barn door is open. And what happened here, I had a little glitch in my video. So I'm going to show you again. So what I did is I filled in the inside of the barn because you can see into there. And I did it with black with a little bit of the blue and yellow. I didn't want it to be a stark black. That would look really odd. And then in this one corner, I added white mixed with um, yellow oxide. Um, so that it looks like there's a little bit of light getting into the barn. Um, right here, the reason it's not blended well is because with my little glitch in the video, that darker shade had already dried. So as I said, you want to have both colors wet to blend well. So I had to re-wet that dark shade to get that lighter corner to blend in. And that looks like now, like, oh, okay, there's a door in there, there's sun, or not sun, but at least light is beginning to shine into that space. Same thing with the window, if you do it the same way, a dark corner and then you have some a lighter corner up at the top right where some light is getting in. And then add snow on the roof. The snow on the roof is straight white because um, otherwise it wouldn't show up against the mountain in the background. So straight white just add it into that area even though you know you're thinking well the canvas is white you still always have to cover every bit of the canvas that's showing also there would be the lightest part over here where the sun is beginning to shine there's some bright white snow here so right in this area here and just know when you start filling in your snow in the back um, on the ground that there is a shadow in front of the barn and to the left so that'll be the bluish shade and then you have this white white shade on the right and I just added some clumps of snow into the pine tree using the corner of my medium brush. And maybe a little bit of snow on this roof line too. Like there would be some snow on this right side of the roof showing. So I added a little line of that along that roof line. And then just, you know, some more clumps in that, in that tree. And maybe on the other pine tree as well, there might be a few little clumps of snow on there. Don't want to overdo it, but just a little with the corner of the medium brush. And then I'm going to fill in this snowy area here. Now this is in shadow. So what I've created is a shade of um, ultramarine blue mixed with the white. 
And if there's a little, you know, black in your brush, so it makes it a slightly gray shade, that's fine too. I kind of like that shade. So it could be ultramarine, a little bit of black and white, or just ultramarine and white. I think in my original, I did just ultramarine and white. Um, but I kind of like adding a little gray to it in this one to make it not such a bright, bright shade. So I'm just uh, filling in this area dab with dabs of my brush because I want it to look like um, it's got some variations of color. So I'm adding some dabs of white into it too. You see that? So it's not just solid. I can see my brush strokes in there. I want to see the variations of color so it looks more three-dimensional. Also adding that color in this area, this darker shade up here, because this is where the tree is going to stand. And your print, you should have the tree on there and you'll see where to do this. And so I split, sped up the video just to show you how I'm filling in this other area, mostly with white, with little bits of blue maybe added into it for variation. Then there's the dark area up front, the shadowed area in front of the barn, and the rest is white with just little bits of blue. So I finished that, as you can see here, um, all the white snow, and you can pause to catch up and fill in with the snow. Then I'm going to start filling in my tree. The tree uh, on your canvas should be printed unless you're doing this on home and then you can sketch it on. And I'm using ultramarine blue mixed with yellow for this side. You can add a little black if you want it to be a little more dramatic and I, I'm going to do that. So black, ultramarine, and yellow to create this darker shade and that's mostly on the left hand side of the tree. I'm creating my tree from scratch here, but if you're using the kit, yours is printed. Just fill in darker shade on the left side, which is the shadowed side. And then on your right side of your tree, you're going to add um, some white and maybe really some white and yellow from the glow from the sunrise on the right hand side of the tree. And I'm using my medium brush again, um, and I just find that best for creating these um, branches. And you have to use a light touch, because the harder you press down on the brush, the more the bristles will spread out. So if, if you're having trouble making these fine lines, practice maybe on your tablecloth or elsewhere first. Just practice the light touch it takes, and having enough paint in your brush where you won't run out of paint but making sure to, so once you load your paintbrush with paint, you want to flatten it out, like flatten it on the side of your palette, because what that does is it'll push out the excess paint that's making your brush fat. You don't want to look at your brush and see a fat brush. You want to see a nice edge every time before you start painting a thin line. So you examine that brush, make sure that there's not too much paint in it, making it the bristles oh, full like, and fat like and flatten out look at the side make sure it's nice and um, flat and then use a light touch and I always say if you're doing a line do it quickly and confidently know where it's going to go in advance and then just go for it because if you do it slowly you tend to I don't know just tend to make it look more uh, it, it doesn't look as random and you often will if you pause you're going to get um, Kind of an unfinished line or irregular line. So as I'm filling in the large area of the trunk, I'm kind of doing dabs of color. I'm not doing like a line right up the side. I don't want it to be one solid line that's darker. So I'm doing some dabs of the darker shade. See that? So I'm thinking bark. So I'm thinking that the bark would have, you know, different lines in it and some three-dimensional look. And then when I do this area down where the tree trunk goes into the snow, um, not using a lot of paint, kind of letting my brush run out of paint. And um, if you're if you're uh, having trouble getting it to look like the snow is, that, like the trunk is going into the snow, I suggest you go back and go back to your snow color after you're finished here and after the trunk is dry and kind of pile some of that snow up on some of these roots and it'll look very natural then. But I didn't uh, do that here because my roots kind of tended, they look like they're kind of going into the snow because I used very little paint. So here I am at adding some more of the dark shade in some areas. And then I'll start adding the lighter shade for the tree on the right hand side. And um, if you want to, on my original painting, when I finished filling in all my major branches of the tree, 
I happen to have a really nice fine like a liner brush and I added some really fine uh, branches into mine but that's just you know you can if you want to but um, I think it's enough for this to do the, the major branches and especially if you have one of the printed sheets you'll probably see some of the fine branch lines showing through um, and they'll look like you painted them so I'm actually not going to do a ton of branches because you get the idea um, so I'll probably leave it at this maybe add a few more um, but I would add more um, than I'm doing right here but in the interest of time that's all I'm going to do maybe just a few more but and then I have the um, barbed wire fence here if you don't like the look of the barbed wire you could also just make the um, barbed wire areas the wire into wooden um, wooden pieces and make your posts thicker so make it a wood fence if you want to I think that would be very cool I kind of like the starkness of the barbed wire but some people might think it looks kind of sad or depressing so if you want to make it a wood fence that's fine too and I would just have these wood pieces over here where the wire goes down into the snow I would have the wood pieces kind of slant down there too so I'm just using a fine touch with my medium brush and filling in that wavering wavy line for the barbed wire then I got to go back and add the little X's on the barbed wire and I will use the small brush for that because that's really hard to do with a medium brush so use a small brush to get those little X's on there and any other detail you want to do with this brush or you want to add some more um, planks into your barn or correct some things on there this would be a good brush to do that or add fine little branches on your tree sign your name you got to sign your name too so don't forget to do that in the lower right corner but also don't forget those birds up in the sky now if you can see them with your printed version if you can see them already and you just want to leave them as the little faded printed birds in the sky you can but I just painted mine in with that same shade uh, that I used on the tree and here I am just adding a few more branches I hope you enjoyed uh, painting the winter barn uh, thanks for painting with me if, if you enjoyed this video I really appreciate it if you would press the like button and subscribe if you subscribe it's not like you're gonna get sent all this you know all these messages and everything it just um, will I think it just notifies you when a new video is downloaded so that's not even that often and here I'm showing you what it's like you can buy a installation kit that you can hang your canvas with you can buy that at socialart.com and check out our other kits thanks for joining me